All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited about this feature. It is described as increased view placement flexibility. Now, it's really more of a feature set because there's different components that describe this, one of them being new drag and drop experience. So to demonstrate that, if we look at the bottom panel here, like the terminal view, we could always drag this and reorder it. But when we start doing so, if I click and start dragging it, you're going to notice there's that bar in the middle to indicate where I'm going to drag it to. So I want to place it in between output and debug console or problems. We get that. You'll also notice up here that the text editor area is now blurred out to indicate that it's not going in that area, I think. Yep, I can't put it in there. And then that's just a nice little plus, right? But one thing you may not know is you can actually move the terminal into the activity bar now, which is really exciting. I can put it as a split up view within the explorer view here. I can turn it into its own icon in the sidebar that I can view now. And then I can move it around even more to wherever I want. I want it in between the search and my source control. I can do the same thing with the debug console. I can move that in here and have it as a split view. So we can start grouping these panels into one panel as well if we wanted to. Or I can drag it out and put it into the activity bar. The possibilities are endless here. So you can tweak the layout of your Visual Studio code to get everything visible that you possibly need at once while you're working with it without hiding things. So instead of hiding from your problems, you can make them front and center and put them up in the activity bar too now. And it gets its own icon, that little exclamation point problems. Visual Studio code has a feature for quickly opening files and navigating between different files without having to click onto the file that you want in particular. So let's say I wanted to get into the server file here. I can press control P or command P if you're on Mac, and then I could start searching for server and then I could hit enter and that would bring me directly to the server option right here. Or if I want to go into a particular area of that file, I can use the little et symbol to start searching through the symbols or the pieces of code within that file that I want to go to. So functions, variables and so forth within this file. So I want to go to like the constructor, let's say and I hit enter and it brings my cursor directly there without me having to take my hands off the keyboard. Wow. That's going to speed up my workflow. The other thing to mention about the quick open improvement here, I'll bring it back up with control P and let's say I wanted to search for something that's a bit common within the project structure and the folder structure that I have. So I'll search for like config here. And you'll notice that I have one in server and client. If I separate these by spaces and I say, I describe it that I want it in the server folder, then it will only show me quick pick options that are relative to the server folder now. So I have config.ts, all the matching results based on my search terms that I'm using here. If I wanted to, I could switch to the client and then we could see I only have one config related file in the client folder. Nice little plus to have all of this to keep you in the flow and quickly navigate your project without having to take your hands off the keyboard and move it to the mouse. When it comes to viewing and searching for extensions, there are what's called extension packs. And what that means is it basically is an extension that will aggregate other extensions as part of it to be installed as kind of one click install for certain purposes, certain types of development you might do. So as an example, there are extensions around Angular that are related to that and people in the community can add extensions into an aggregate extension, an extension pack. The problem with some of this in the past, at least was you didn't know exactly what extensions were in there. You've relied on the extension pack author to list out all the extensions that are included as part of it. Let's use another example, the remote development extension pack. And what has changed now when we're viewing these extensions is we can see very clearly at the top, all the extensions that are included as part of this pack. So we have remote WSL, remote containers, and remote SSH. So this is great to give you an idea of what you're getting into, what are the things that are being installed as part of this extension pack more clearly. All right, I don't know about you all, but this next feature is going to be a huge savior for me in the workflow that I follow, and I imagine it will be for you as well. So you go about your business and you're working in a particular file. Let's take this server.ts file as an example, and you make some changes to it. And I think for this one, I don't need this dot listen function to be called anymore. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to save that. And then I scroll through, I review some other things and I think, you know what? All right, I'm good here. I'm going to close it. Then I go about my business working in other files. So I'm working in index.ts. Maybe I go into the log.ts file. I'm working in there. And then I remember, oh, you know what? I actually need to undo what I, I did before I made a mistake, but I forget exactly what I did. 
So let's go back over to server.ts and oh man, I don't know where I'm at. I'm in the middle of this file right now. I forget exactly what I did. I can actually undo what I did. It's remembered and persisted on the stack for me for this particular file in VS Code. So I can undo and there it is. It brings back the code that I changed or removed or updated before I closed out this file. Now the key thing here though is I can't reopen this file and make more changes because then that stack will be lost. So this is going to be very helpful in situations when you forget about what you changed and you need to go back and undo what you did. So there you go. That is the persisted undo redo stack feature. Sometimes it'd be really useful to see the history, like the git commit history of a particular file to see how it changed over time. And now thanks to the timeline view that's built into Visual Studio Code, we get to see stuff like that whether it be git commits, file saves, or test runs, that can all be displayed via this new timeline view. And the way we can get that visible to us, at least for the git commit history, we can right click in the explorer view and choose timeline and check that so that we have that visibility now into that panel. And you notice this new collapsible panel showed up called timeline. This is gonna show me the git commit history for the file that is currently active, so server.ts. And now I can see all the different changes that happened to it over time, and then I can click on each individual commit here to see the difference between this particular commit and the previous one. And that again is provided to us thanks to the timeline view feature.